Hello. Good evening, everybody. So I wanted to um, have this little live session about student loans um, because I know quite a few of you have had questions and this is the student loan co um, services coaching community, right? So um, here's my little sign here about student loans that we have in the group. Um, so let me share with you my slides about student loans real quick and we can have a discussion about them. I hope you're all having a wonderful Monday. It's the beginning of the week, right? Okay. So this is a little webinar that I gave, little slides here that I gave to some teachers that had some questions about student loan forgiveness. And I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about that. I gave them a little introduction about myself, that I've been a teacher for 20 years, married with two daughters, and I'm a student loan specialist. Um, and then I have similar background to them that I can relate to what they're going through when it comes to student loans and having student loan forgiveness. And um, there is, let me uh, present this from the beginning so that it looks, we can have it bigger here. Okay. Um, there is a cancel student loans order. I'm sure you've seen it in the news about getting student loans canceled. It's, um, I think there's some news that just came out about it from um, the presidential candidates, right? Um, more than half a million people, actually, it's, yeah, I think it's 725,000 people have signed on to the change.org petition, petition using urging President Trump to sign an executive order to cancel all student loans held by the federal government or roughly 85% of all student debt. Um, the creator of the petition, Alan Collinge, and founder of the studentloanjustice.org, believes that the order would be the least expensive and most expedient way to inject trillions into the economy, which continues to be slammed by the coronavirus pandemic. The petition notes that there are 55 million borrowers and co-signers struggling under 1.8 trillion in debt, with over 100 billion in interest alone being sucked out of the economy every year. In addition, former Chief Operating Officer for the Office of Federal Student Aid, Wayne Johnson, told Fox News' Tucker Carlson in November 2019 that 80% of all borrowers, borrowers will never be able to pay back their loans. Isn't that the truth? Um, and right now, federal student loan payments have been deferred through December. Um, on August 8, President Donald Trump signed a memorandum ordering Secretary of Education Betsy DeVos to extend student loan relief policies, including, including the CARES Act that were scheduled to expire on September 30th through the end of December. On Friday, August 21st, um, it was implemented, the measure providing student loan borrowers with an additional three months of relief. It was supposed to expire in September and then it got extended to December. It was passed on March 27th. It paused federal student loan payments and temporarily set the federal student loan interest rate to 0%. All borrowers with federally held student loans will have their payments automatically suspended until 2021 without penalty. In addition, the interest rate on all federally held student loans will be set to 0% through the end of the calendar year. According to most recent figures from the Department of Education, roughly 42.6 million federal student loan borrowers collectively owe over 1.5 trillion in federal student debt. Um, the announcement also extended protections for borrowers with defaulted federal student loans from having their wages garnished during this time. However, the Trump administration has faced serious critiques as well as class action lawsuits for failing to fully halt wage garnishment during the pandemic. According to the same and full-time workers who qualify for the public service loan forgiveness programs such as teachers and Peace Corps volunteers will have the following three months count towards the 120 payments they are required to make before their debt is forgiven through the Trump administration, though the Trump administration has previously attempted to eliminate the program. Um, and I'm gonna go into what public service loan forgiveness is. But let's talk about a little bit about defaulted student loans. If a borrower misses nine consecutive monthly payments towards their student loan debt, the loans can go into a defaulted status. The Department of Education takes the loan away from the original servicer and assigns a collection agency to begin servicing the defaulted loans. Once in default, the borrower may be certified 
for a treasury offset. Any tax refunds and or federal benefits may be withheld and applied directly to the balance of the defaulted loans. The borrower may have their wages garnished by 15 to 25%. The borrower's employer may be required to withhold that portion of the wages and send it to the loan holder to pay the defaulted loan. Collection costs and fees are added to the original defaulted loan balance. The defaulted loans will report as a collection account on the borrower's credit report. So these student loans that trillions of people have in America right now, um, if they go into default, say they lost their job because of coronavirus, this has pretty much been halted like um, for them to have to pay it back until January. But if they go into default, it really um, does affect their credit reports and their credit score. I know I've had um, I've had a client who had her loans, her student loans in default, and they started to take her tax money. So she wasn't she hadn't gotten any um, a tax refund in a couple of years because they just decided we'll just take your tax money since you're not paying on your student loans. And there's a way to go through rehab to get that fixed. Um, and I was going to be putting her in a rehab program. So the teach grant, so there are teach grants. The teach grant program provides grants of up to $4,000 a year to students who are completing or planning to complete coursework needed to begin a career in teaching. Um, I've had a lot of teachers come and talk to me about how they have teach grants and they think that that is the only thing that's offered um, to help relieve them from the student loan payments and that is not true. There are other options. As a condition for receiving a TEACH grant, you must sign a TEACH grant agreement to serve in which you agree to, among other requirements, teach in a high need field at an elementary school, secondary school, or educational service agency that serves students from low income families and for at least four complete academic years within eight years after completing or ceasing enrollment in the course of study for which you receive the grant. Note, if you do not meet the requirements of your service obligation, all TEACH grants you receive will be converted to direct unsubsidized loans. You must repay these loans in full with interest charge from the date of each TEACH grant disbursement. Okay, so there are a lot of teachers that said, oh, I've heard about the TEACH grant. I can only get $4,000 covered. Yes, that's true, but there are other options. Um, student loan consolidation. So, if there are customers that you have, credit repair customers that you have that have various different student loans with different interest rates, it's always important to recommend that they get their loans, their student loans consolidated. Um, the Department of Education is not the servicer of the loan. There, the services are Navient, Great Lakes, Fed Loan Servicing. This is who collects on the loans that you have. Um, they could have the loans being serviced by different servicers. So they could have one with Navient, they could have one with Fed Loan Servicing, and then they could have one with Great Lakes. They could all be different servicers and they're all going to be different interest rates. Um, they cannot consolidate the loans if they're still attending school. Um, they could submit an application to the servicer and then they elect who they want the new servicer to be. So maybe they get them all consolidated with Fed Loan Servicing. They could do that. Um, consolidation is pretty much one brand new loan with a fixed interest rate. So the good thing about consolidation is that it pretty much shows that you pay, if you get your loans consolidated, it will show that you've paid off all of those multiple loans with different interest rates. And then you have, so then it will show that it's paid in full on your credit report. And then you have one, a brand new loan, just one brand new loan that will show on your credit report. And, um, it won't be in default. It will show that it's current and it's paid as long as you continue to pay it, right? And then re there are various repayment options for student loans. There's obviously the standard repayment plan. It's a fixed monthly payment designed to pay loans off within 10 years. Actually, that should say, I think that should be 20 years. That's not correct. Um, Oh yeah, okay, paid off within 10 years, that is correct. And then there's the graduated repayment plan. That's monthly payments are lower at first and increase every two years. This plan is designed to pay loans off within 10 years, 10 to 30 years with consolidated loans. 
Um, but a lot of these standard repayment plans are usually 20 to 25 years. They're not usually 10 years. They're um, a longer span of time. There is an income driven repayment plan, a program that allows borrowers to pay loans back based on family size and income and receive forgiveness after 20 to 25 years of payments, depending on the plan. Payments can be as low as $0 a month. Annual recertification of family size and income is required to remain in this program. And then the income driven repayment plan is good. You have to have your loans consolidated first, then you, um, apply for the income driven repayment plan, which um, it's taking a while. I've noticed I did mine personally for myself and it took between two to three months for it to get approved. So right now, I guess they're a little backed up with paperwork. Mine, I put it in July and I just got it approved this month. So August, September, October. So it took three months, yeah. And mine, I pay $0 a month for my student loans. Um, so the income-based student loan repayment plans, these repayment plans set your monthly student loan payment to an affordable amount based on your income and family size. They include the pay as you earn repayment plan, so P-A-Y-E. There's the income-based repayment plan, IBR plan. And then there's the income contingent repayment plan, ICR plan, okay? So there's three different ones. And then here is where they um, go into the calculation, the $0 monthly payment calculation. So if you have a family size of one and your income is up to $18,000 a year, then you would qualify to pay $0 a month on your student loans. If you have family size of two, up to $24,000 a year. Family size of three, up to $31,000 a year for your salary. Family size of four, up to $37,000 a year to qualify for the $0 monthly payment, repayment program. And then the federal student loan forgiveness repayment plans. Teachers can be eligible for student loan forgiveness, meaning you're no longer required to repay some or all of your loan because they provide a public service. Some programs that offer student loan forgiveness for teachers include the public service loan forgiveness program, the teacher loan forgiveness program, which is only, the, the only thing about the teacher loan forgiveness program is that it only um, will forgive up to $17,500. And then there's the Perkins loan cancellation program. And then with the public service loan forgiveness program, um, you'll pretty much instead of paying 20 to 25 years for your student loans, it's going to have you pay for only 10 years as long as you're also on the income driven repayment program. And then once you're doing the $0, if you qualify for $0 a month, or it could be maybe $100 a month, whatever it is you qualify for, you'll do that consecutively for 10 years. And then you also have to be on the public service loan forgiveness program also. And after 10 years, the Department of Education will forgive whatever balance is left on your student loan. So for example, I owe, I'm not gonna tell you how much, but I have a bachelor's, I have two masters and I'm halfway through my doctorate degree. So I owe a bunch of money for my student loans. Um, I think I'm on my sixth or seventh year of the public service loan forgiveness program. So by the time I get to the 10th year, there's still going to be a bunch of money left over that I have to pay on my student loans, but that's going to be washed away and I will not owe that money back. Okay. Um, so the public service loan forgiveness program. It was designed to forgive any remaining unpaid balance of the borrower's loans after they have made 120 qualifying monthly payments under a qualifying repayment plan while working full time for a qualifying employer. Okay. Qualifying employers are federal, state, local gov government organizations or 501c3 nonprofit organizations. So you could be a teacher, you could be a police officer, you could be a nurse, you could work for a nonprofit organization to qualify. Um, qualifying repayment plan must be, and you must be enrolled in an income driven repayment plan program also. And then the qualifying payments must make 120 payments under an IDR while working for a qualifying employer full time, at least 30 hours a week. The 120 payments do not have to be consecutively and qualifying payments begin once enrolled in an IDR program. 
The forgiven balance is non-taxable. The borrower is not required to report forgiven balance as taxable income. Um, and then another thing I wanted to say about the, when you're on the public service loan forgiveness, say for instance, you stop working full-time for your employer and you decide to maybe take two or three years off to go back to school i did i did that myself and so it pretty much halts it for that time and then when you go back to working full-time then it restarts it at the at wherever you left off um, or if you take time off to have a baby i did that also i took a year off so it halts it and then once you start working full-time again then it restarts it from that point that you left off at okay so it doesn't like start it all over again, which is good. Um, so if this is something, what I was offering to my teachers was consultations about it, but now I'm doing pre-qualification. So if they're pretty much ready to go, I have a pre-qualification for them to fill out on my website so that I'm not just taking calls and wasting time talking to them and telling them about it. I want them to be ready to go and ready to start on um, getting help with their student loan, their public service loan forgiveness. I have to say that I've heard from quite a few teachers that are that believe that public service loan forgiveness is a scam. They don't believe that it's real, that it's authentic. And then they hear other teachers say that 99% um, of the people that apply do not get approved. Well, that's because they are not filling out the paperwork properly. And then a lot of, uh, I've heard from other teachers that are telling me, well, um, the income driven repayment program, it factored in my husband's income. So I didn't get to do the $0 a month. Now I have to pay 300 a month. Well, that's because there is a way to do it so that your husband's income is not factored into the paperwork. And so obviously they're gonna need help on how to do that. Um, so I have some teachers that say that think that they could do it on their own and then they do it on their own and then they're like, oh, wait a minute, I didn't qualify for $0 a month because my husband's income was factored in. Well, that's what we're here for as student loan service specialists, we would be there to help them, right? So um, if that's something that you're interested in um, doing the course, I'm hoping that, the, um, that I'm going to have a guest that I'm gonna be interviewing soon that will help talk about the student loan services course. I'm still um, haven't got an answer yet about that, but hopefully soon. And so I'm going to interview him and then he'll be on um, in our group. But um, if it's something that you want to partner with me on, because maybe you don't have it in your credit repair business, then you could uh, let me know that you could message me. You could leave me a comment below this video. Um, a lot, by the time they get to me on the phone, the uh, customer, they've been pre-qualified and then they're gonna need, obviously they're gonna need help with the application submittal. Um, so I would help them with that, get the paperwork for them. They'd have to pay the fee um, and I charge them a certain amount. Um, if, you're, if you're interested, I'll let you know. Um, so if you're interested in partnering about that or if you wanna take the class and I'm, We'll talk about that in very near future about what class it is that you have to you have to pay for that, obviously. But if you want to partner with me on me possibly being your student loan services consultant specialist, I can do that with you um, and we can if you want to do that, you just put your email in the comments section and then we could uh, talk. I can send you a Calendly link and we could talk on the phone further about it. OK. So hopefully I gave you a lot of information, which I believe I did. Um, if you have any other questions about student loan services or want to get started and add that to your credit repair business, it's very lucrative. Um, it's a great addition to add to your credit repair business. Maybe you don't have that many um, credit repair customers or maybe you want to add something extra to your credit repair business because it's a high, it's a high ticket item. Um, and then they have to keep coming back to you once a year or two. So they're gonna to have to keep getting their paperwork renewed and redone as well. So then they have to, they'll have to come back and pay another fee once a year to get their paperwork done again. Um, so this is a great way, uh, a great asset to add onto your company, your credit repair company, if you're interested in doing that. And I know that it will definitely help their, with their credit reports because there's a lot of customers out there that have student loans and it's uh, ruining their credit, or they maybe it's in default, or maybe the loans are not consolidated, 
or maybe they don't know about loan forgiveness and they could get or the income driven repayment program so they could get on that and that would help them right instead of paying $300 a month maybe for the student loans they're paying $0 a month I'm sure that your customers would love to hear about that right well how do I get $0 a month um, so the, these were some you know I gave you some information quite a bit of detail I haven't gone into I mean there's a lot of different programs and stuff that not everybody knows about I mean and they they do exist if you know how to fill out the paperwork and you know how to do it then you're not going to get rejected okay um, so please leave your comments below if you're interested you can leave your email in the comments section and I will get in touch with you okay thank you so much have a great night okay thank you so much for watching my video I have to make sure that I stop recording <laughs>